All right. So that's all right. That's the end of the Halloween jokes. I promise. Uh, this is our community meeting. I have nothing immediately for the good of the order. Feel free to uh, speak up if you do. Otherwise, let's jump right to the visualizations and and get to the the good stuff. So, uh, Ani, if you'd like to uh, take over the the screen share, I'm going to go ahead and stop my slideshow here. Got it. Let me take out from here. Uh, before we jump in, uh, let me talk about a few things on the current uh, challenges and the domain and the space in which we work in, set the context right, and then go with why we build such a thing uh, before jumping into the architecture design con uh, conversations. So uh, primarily, uh, when we think about analytics use cases, discoverability use cases, and some of the primary use cases on observability, uh, one of the primary languages for that on open search is pipe processing language. The pipe processing language allows you a very simple Unix style command, which just has a pipe where you can put different commands and functions all together. To work on this language, you get a command line uh, on top of a UI, you get a REST API, and uh, pretty soon you'll get a CLI and few more uh, streaming search functions coming on the way to uh, search in-flight data. With the commands, you also get functions. So we have more than 100 functions right now. They are mathematical functions, date functions, relevance functions, type conversion functions, and we keep on improving and adding functions to support a lot more ML and AI workflows also going ahead. So you can screw together uh, custom commands to build your workflows. Uh, language definition identifiers, all the good stuff is in this documentation. I'll share this link on the chat in a few, but this should be available on primary documentation on open source. As you go through the use cases, uh, this feature is currently available as part of the observability plugin. Uh, pretty soon, this will be overall available in the entire framework and have broader availability for all users. As we go through logs, uh, this is an example use case where you can quickly do match on a index of logs and figure things out uh, and filter queries on here. Few other use cases on here. Uh, we use an autocomplete. Uh, it's a new language. It might have familiarity with some older users to other similar languages floating around in the industry. But for now, uh, an autocomplete is something that helps users know the commands, learn the language, and there is inline help available in the function. So you can now evaluate which other commands you need to learn and work them, uh, work with documentation right in line. With the filtering and log analytic capabilities, few more things available as part of this workflow is an ability to view and create visualizations. So one pretty strong tenet of this framework is exploring logs, creating pivot tables and analyzing logs while working on visualizations are two sides of the same coin. So you want to do log analytics, explore, uh, you have too many logs. Now you cannot explore in text. So now you go to visualizations. Maybe you do bars, scatter plots, you pick a time range, you pick some filters, you have some existing things in here, which we can see with uh, statistics. And that way evaluate based on statistics, which filters you want to use or which are the next things you want to use. If I remove everything, you don't have a visualization option, you switch over to logs. And now you can evaluate with uh, which are the common values, rare values, and have uh, an indication towards where you want to go. The biggest blocker to this workflow today is when you start from scratch, uh, you need to learn the language to create visualization. It has a language for visualization and it's not intuitive for users to get go from the beginning. To solve this approach and to make it seamless for power users, but also new users, uh, we introduce a project which is uh, PPL based query parsing and building and working with UI for workflows as a single model where the query builds a UI and the UI builds a query. So power users can just work with the UI, transition old format queries, migrate systems, and the queries just work. Uh, 
behind the scenes, uh, new users can just go click, move things and work on UIs. And they also learn the queries because UI system will start building the queries and teach them dual ways. Any questions until now? Okay, perfect. So going ahead, uh, some of the key components of the system are, uh, there is an antler grammar that powers everything behind the PPL engine. The antler grammar behind the engine is primarily part of the SQL project. You can go to developer documentation and see fundamentally how the architecture works. If you look at the architecture, the antler and the semantic analyzer are pluggable. Everything else behind the scene is a single implementation detail that switches out uh, storage layers. So the goal for such a project is to work on SQL and PPL. So you can use SQL and PPL interchangeably with visualizations. And one of the key things to get it functionally complete, the big risk over is the edge cases. Like how do we catch edge cases or miss edge cases? How do we maintain it long-term? And for those reasons, we brought Antler and the code generation with Antler in the visualization tier, where most of the visualization framework is completely rebuilt and code gen from an Antler parser. So when you add new grammar, new functions, we just rebuild, we know the diff and we can functionally keep on catching up and maintaining this code base long term. Right now, uh, the query manager works as a query parser, a builder, and has some interfaces to work independently with the visualization framework. From a visualization system, the visualization system doesn't know PPL. It doesn't know anything. It simply knows a data frame-like structure and it expects a common structure, no matter the responses are coming from OpenSearch, from S3, from Prometheus, no matter where they come from, it just has a very strict contract. The entire interface is a lot more detail in here. I'll leave the issue here. You can comment on it and see the implementation details. Uh, please feel free to contact Eric. Uh, he couldn't make it today, but next time I think he'll go in more details. Uh, he's been the lead developer and running most of this project. I'm just here because he's not feeling well today. Let's jump into the demo and see how this looks up. And there are two aspects of this project that I want to showcase. Uh, this is a running demo right now. One aspect of this project is how the interaction between the UI and the visual components work. But the second aspect is we've added a lot more functionality with respect to just tooling and options. Like can we show hide some features, simple things, uh, rotate labels behind, uh, grouping, theming, have options for availability, create thresholding, uh, custom layout changes, most of this, including different visualization types, all of this is coming brand new as part of the streamlined release over here. Uh, this is all targeted for 2.4. We're still just working towards uh, figuring out kinks and removing most of them and getting ready for a release. Uh, let's check some of the features over here. So max bytes, we are looking at uh, max byte as a series and client IP is a dimension. If I click on this, I get to choose, like what else do I want? Uh, maybe I go from client IP to host, update this, update the chart, and you see the client IP, uh, the host over here is, uh, the client IP gets replaced by host. If I replace on client IP and refresh, it would have a similar change on the dimensionality over here. We can completely change as many dimensions as you can add over here. We can add multiple series and each of this is represented with a similar UI. Uh, the concepts now are purely on the statistical domain and they go into defining a visualization cube. They have no understanding of the engine below it. So as we get into S3 data sets or Prometheus data sets, all of the visualization with their config options will work exactly as is without any changes to the interaction over here. And that's mostly my quick demo over here. Any questions, any thoughts and comments on this? 
what is it specifically that you're you're looking at there? So currently, the, the data. Currently, I'm looking at sample logs, and within sample logs, I'm going through a pivot table of maximum bytes uh, with a count of events that are spanned over a timestamp with one day granularity. I can see most of the data over here. I just flip to the events tab and the events tab will me will give me a pivot table of everything that is going on. For quick reference uh, in the visualization tab, I can also tabulate the data to see what's underneath it. And maybe I need a new filter or a new range and I can keep on exploring and continuing my exploration over here. Uh, I have one question. Sure. Um, so do you mind um, elaborating a bit on, you mentioned that you can uh, plug that into something like Prometheus. Do you mind um, elaborating a little bit on how, uh, how that would happen? So this is another RFC. I'll share the link over here. Uh, this has a design document to introduce Prometheus as a data source behind PPL. Sorry, behind PPL. So the languages look like source equal to. We have a concept of a catalog, and behind the catalog, you can run promql commands as is, or you can run PPL commands, and we will silently translate them behind the scenes. You get access to promql and PPL both while connecting to a remote data source like Prometheus. You got it. So for more details, what... I'll just share this link and you can go from here. Great, great. And and is, does it also explain, so that sounds like how you translate between the query. Uh, is there also a different, I assume in the response format that you have to, uh, like in the data, like the way the data is um, <clears throat> is returned? Yes. So the response format, no matter where we are coming from, goes over the formatting tier. The formatting okay. tier, maybe it is SQL, PPL, talking to S3, talking to Prometheus, it's a standard formatting tier. Okay. Uh, these connectors take us time to develop, but our goal is to develop a few high quality connectors with full or maximum coverage. So with Prom PromQL, we have 95% coverage over the language semantics and all the return types are converted into a JDBC result set. JDBC result set is the cube format that we use for visualizations. Uh, effectively, when we throw it on the UI, uh, currently they are encoded, they are over HTTP and they're encoded as a standard compression algorithm. Eventually, we want to do uh, zero copy data frames moving to the visualization tier. But most of the heavy lifting is done in this tier. Got it. Thank you. And this tier can only work because we have the logical and physical plan so that the planner knows the query. So it can knowledge with the knowledge of the query orient the output. It's not a simple parser. We have to have the full work to mm -hmm. have a clean parser implemented in there with coverage. My fear is our fear is really remaining always on the tail end. The tail end of these things are really difficult to debug long term and create maintenance mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Makes sense. Any other questions? There was a question in the chat. Um, has any thought gone into um, making these visualizations embeddable outside of open search that you're aware of? So outside of open search, uh, outside of open oh, dashboards, sorry. Outside of open search dashboards. So maybe being able to embed a visualization into a web page external to dashboards. I think there's an issue open over there. If I'm not mistaken, currently you can do it, Ryan. Uh, I, I remember sparsely working on some customer with this. Uh, it just depends on different authentication types and what authentication type you're choosing and how you plan to do that. But I think you can do it. It's available today. I had one question um, for the command line interface. How do you see a lot of people using that? Like, would they be, you know, streaming and viewing it within their um, console or would they, you know, be piping it to a file? Like, what is the expected use there? I have a GitHub issue for your every question. <laughs> <laughs> so, I believe you uh, do. 
So here's the PPL streams project. Uh, it creates a command line interface and a library. We plan to integrate into Kafka, Open Telemetry Exporter. It can go into Data Prepper. It, it's mm -hmm. everywhere. Uh, the goal for this is there is a choice that people need to make every single time they are using log analytics. Uh, have you seen uh, this old World War II movie, uh, Sophie's Choice? Have you seen that movie? It's a really dark choice, but that's a dark choice we are asking uh, every developer or system manager to take today. Do I need all my logs in a logging engine or do I keep some logs on my disk? And I think that's more or less my uh, analogy over. It's a very hard choice and we don't want people to do that choice. So with this project, you can use a CLI or enable it as a server and the UIs will do remote streaming and you can do a single place, in place search on the edge or a stream or S3 or open search. Mm, that's really interesting. So this is the project, it's still coming along. We have some components in data prepper, other components are getting built on and this is a long-term project for us. But that's the intention search for logs wherever they are. And sometimes you don't transport trace logs. Some logs you put filters and you don't transport. And last minute you realize shit at 2 a.m. I would have, it would have been better if I finished this logging also in the server. So now you don't need to make the choice. You can choose them after the fact. As the runtime operation is happening, you can go there and search. Very cool. Any other questions, comments? Like to be honest, long term, you don't need this visualization. You don't need this query bar. But for a power user, I think it is really, really useful. But eventually, you can just keep on doing this and you can just hide this. Yep, that's what's coming. Uh, so interactive search with a lot more visualization options and control options to go with and uh, multiple types of visualizations. Well, that looks really cool. Mm -hmm. And this is on the roadmap for 2.4, this portion, or is that just per preview? 2.4. Uh, 2.4, very cool. Well, if there's nothing else from the crowd, uh, did, did you have something else you wanted to share, Ani? No, I think this is it. We had one more presentation today on knowledge graphs, but I think uh, Leo is also not well today. But I think uh, he might do justice to knowledge graphs and the graph has, has a use case. I'll just introduce quickly. Uh, Leo is a core developer who built YangDB and we've been working very closely with him and he's oh. part of the open search high level languages team. And we've been trying to get knowledge graphs and GraphQL, GQL as standard patterns supported on open search. And he is going to talk about this and he has some pretty cool demos. That sounds like some gourd stuff. And uh, Brian asks, uh, was 2.4 including the Prometheus feature or was that um, not yet? 2.4 is also a Prometheus feature on open search, yes. Oh, wow, okay. And two Excellent. Well, thank you for uh, for sharing. Feel free to relinquish the share if you like. Uh, David, did you were you going to share something about Hacktoberfest today? I sure am. Awesome. I can't wait to hear all about it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Ani. Yeah, thank you very much, Ani. There we go. So, hi, everyone. David, developer advocate for Open Search here at, working at AWS. So, super excited to talk a little bit about Hacktoberfest. Um, some of you guys might have heard of it. You might not have, so I will happily introduce it. So Hacktoberfest is an event that happens every October. Um, it is a celebration of open source. And in particular, it's a really great starting place for people to get involved in open source and open source communities. It's uh, mainly put on by uh, Docker, AppRite, DigitalOcean, but tons of other communities get involved. And we are also participating. So you'll find we also have our own blog about Hacktoberfest and what we are doing. Gonna paste that. Oh, nope, Nate already beat me to it. Or Chris, thank you, Chris. Um, so 
we're going to be talking a little bit over the next couple of days about, you know, like what it means to contribute, because there are several different ways you can contribute. You can contribute code, which is, you know, bug fixes, texts, features, um, even code examples is a really great way to contribute. And then there's non-code ways you can contribute. So updating documentation, doing uh, feature requests, bug reports, blogs, tutorials, even just answering people on the forums. Um, in fact, that was actually just added to Hacktoberfest's official way to contribute to open source. So um, with that, just wanted to open the doors up and say anyone can contribute. And we have some incentives for contributing. We have a leaderboard and we are working on a point system. We are running this ship as building this airplane as we fly it, <laughs> so to speak. So um, if I have to manually go through every issue and every PR on GitHub to find these and accredit people points, I will. I'm hoping to have it all script. But um, our top five contributors are going to be able to get swag bags that are going to have, let me find this, do, 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 do. water bottle, a sweatshirt, and a sticker pack. And any contributions you make on OpenSearch between October 1st and 31st, so long as you signed up for Hacktoberfest's page, also counts towards your Hacktoberfest contribution, which gets you a wicked t-shirt, and I am not wearing mine today. I have one from, I think, 2019 and 17. So it's super fun. If you want to get started, and if Zoom would move out of my way, God bless. There we go. There we go. Thank you, Chris. Um, always on it, I swear. We have 266 issues that are tagged with good first issue on the Open Search Project. So you can check out org, open search project, label, good first issue. And I think Chris has the addition of the Hacktoberfest tag. But um, any issue that you work on, you create a PR for, and that's accepted, can be tagged Hacktoberfest accepted, and you'll get credit for that. Um, all that to say, we're super grateful for all the people who've been contributing so far. We've already seen a pretty decent uptick and the number of contributors um, from documentation to people just reaching out and saying, hey, you know, we're excited to get working on this. So with that, I think that about covers it. So yeah, we did uh, run pretty quick there. Uh, I don't mind opening up the floor to just about anything anyone wants to ask or discuss or or chat, you know, related to, to open search or open search dashboards. Uh, I, I know I personally keep looking at the uh, the visualization the drag and drop visualizations for open search dashboards and just uh, being mesmerized by it. Yeah, it's and I like how really uh, it it looks like with with PPL you could start with a very very basic query that just kind of gives you a thirty thousand foot view of what you want to keep an eye on, and then instead of having to learn more PPL, it looks like you can just kind of drill down into the, those little extended bits through that UI. And that uh, that makes me happy. That's a cool feature. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's going to so, be really exciting. I've actually got a question if you're yeah. open to it. Uh, it's kind of related to Ani's presentation. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, and then there was a few questions also about Prometheus. Uh, since the work is being done on the query side of things and the language side of things, how about the visualization side of things in terms of visualizing Prometheus time series queries? Like, is that going to just work or is there additional work that needs to be done after 2.4? Ani, do you have a good answer to that question? I think I know the answer, but I think you might be better qualified to answer that one. Or <laughs> I, I can, I'll, I'll take that. I, cool. from what I understand about it so far, it should just work with time series data like we have support for now. So the PPL and the underlying abstractions allow us to use all of the features that we normally would expect in dashboards uh, with Prometheus. So that should include time series and um, the like. While I think I think there is some work that needs to be done um, after talking to the SQL team a little bit. Um, 
to support all the features. Like we're still implementing, you know, each individual feature into, you know, the SQL language as, as is, you know, brought up by the community, basically. Does that answer yeah. your question, Jonah? Yeah. And so that's expected in November with 2.4. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how will the data sources be defined for Prometheus too? Like, how does that whole thing work? So let me see if I can find that issue real quick. Yeah, uh, and then he showed us some where it was like some code that went into the middle of your PPL query. Oh, it's defined at execution time. I didn't see that part. Yep. Yeah, and actually there's, I mean, this is all part of the work to, you know, even further build out the underlying data stores that can be accessed from dashboards. Uh, another thing that's going to be really interesting coming up here shortly is you'll be able to connect to multiple instances of open search um, with dashboards as well, which is going to be phenomenal. Nice. I guess I'll take Thank myself off screen share while I find that. Yeah, you're good. Uh, sorry. Uh, Thanks I for covering that one, David. I had to re reconnect, but I can answer questions. I'm sorry, my bad. Yeah, no worries. Did you so hear the question? The... No. Oh, could, could oh you... okay. Please. Yeah. I think so you that... answered it okay, but if you want to repeat it, David, go for it. Yeah. I think Ani might be able to add some color. So, Ani, the question was, you know, um, how are time series data going to be supported in, you know, PPL? Is that just going to be an out of the box type thing? Um, and then also, what is the process going to be like for um, connecting to different data stores? Are they just going to be like built in as indexes or how do you like alter between? Got it. So let me take that. So uh, SQL and PPL, both of these are language heads on top of uh, open search engine. Fundamentally, the way they work, let me actually share my screen. That might be a much more better explanation if I share it with a diagram here. Uh, give me one second. Zoom, share screen. Picking the right screen. The logical and physical planners are implemented. At the end of the end of this phase is an executor. And this executor is purely something that is responsible for generating the engine specific queries. Now, this executor is responsible for DSL, which is connecting to open search. But there are some features that the DSL does not support. For example, there is no joins in a DSL. So we have a block hash join algorithm built in there, and which will take care of block hash joins and do resource limiting on it. Uh, there are some uh, lookup features, uh, some very specific evaluations and expression evaluations, which is not there. For that, we have a, a compiled Lucene codec that runs things on Lucene and responds with uh, replies on top. So overall, this is the whole architecture of how DSL, how SQL people queries get converted to DSL. Now, after that, uh, when you attach a different engine, it's a plugin. And these plugins are extensible. Today, we have an S3 plugin in the works, which is fairly powerful. We work with ORC format. It's somewhere in the code base right now. Uh, it works with ORC and Avro. We're also supporting standard FluentD S3 write formats. Any other systems out there, they have standard logging S3 formats will support. And talking to S3, it's going to be a low latency pull. So when we are doing S3, uh, there is another project. I don't have a link handy, but there's a GitHub project for materialized views. And we're doing SQL materialized views with acceleration. And for that, we'll use open search as our materialized cache. And covered queries will run between remote data sources and open search. So with this, the plugin developers for data sources can now connect to Prometheus, uh, CloudWatch, or any other data source out there. And we have two example patterns that we can keep on adding over here. Thanks, Ani. Uh, what was the format you mentioned? ARC, A-R-C? ARC, O-R-C. Oh, O-R-C. O-R-C, okay. standard. We're Not using familiar. standard Hadoop and storage format. You're not building anything new. Got it. 
Right. We'll support all Hadoop formats, Fluentd formats, Loki formats, everything out there. We're going to play well with everybody. And we also support S3 Select and uh, some of the objects format from other o OCI and other guys. Ani, so Ryan asked a question in the chat. Um, what other output methods are being thought through? Um, there was, he said he heard something about zero copy, um, was wondering about maybe Panda's data frames, or um, do you have any idea on the spec for that and what, what what is going out? So we have a data frame format, which is similar to Grafana data frame that we POC'd. Now Grafana data frame is a standard data frame, it's something fancy, but Grafana also has a similar implementation where they use a front-end data frame and a back-end data frame to match methods. Uh, but I think overall, uh, most of the cost in visualizations or data transfer is unfurling the data, but also the encoding and decoding of large data sets for rendering, you have to pay a heavy price on that. So Apache Arrow is something that we have been looking at to move data between backend and frontend systems without unfurling or without memory calls. Nice. And then Ryan also asked, um, oh, here we go. Uh, what other uh, connectors are being thought um, aside from S3 and Prometheus? Um, I'd also ask Ryan, if there, is there anything you want to see? <laughs> Please yeah. drop it in the chat. <laughs> That's the better way to just just uh, yeah. It. Now's the time. <laughs> yeah, we were focusing on Prometheus uh, because everybody wants metrics and everybody loves Prometheus, and I think we also love Prometheus. It it works nicely. So we get a single aggregated view, and we can correlate with Prometheus data with logs and traces. And for the correlation views, we use uh, materialized views, so we can accelerate the correlation uh, workflows. And I'll, and I'll be perfectly honest. So my question, I guess, the for metrics, yeah, Prometheus is one, and that you know, it's it, it's what you know everyone's using. But especially for things like traces and stuff like that, there's a handful of different data stores. Um, and I'm just wondering about interconnectivity with that. I'll be honest, not part of my use case right now at all. Um, but I could see it being something someone would be interested in. We haven't thought about traces as a different data stores. But I I think we've been working and talking to uh, Jonah for a while and getting native support for uh, uh, Jaeger. Uh, we have issues. We've been talking and researching it. And uh, we want to fill in this item. We want to finish uh, and have a good coverage of uh, support for open source from Jaeger and make it very seamless for the community to move in here. So if you have any data sources that you want for tracing, let us know and just put an issue. We'll go for it. So it looks like uh, Sarat joined uh, midway and he's uh, he or she is asking, uh, did we have to build dedicated connectors for S3 slash blob storage? I don't understand the question. What do you mean by did we have to build? I don't know if you guys can hear me. We can hear you. Loud and clear. Okay, cool. Um, so Ani, my question was, so you're, you're trying to query S3 and other blob storage. Um, in terms of the connectors and uh, how do you connect to S3 versus OCI versus maybe Azure, um, did you build some pieces of block which, which you use and um, parse the data versus um, did, did you use something which, which is probably some, so, could be shipped as a library or something which could be used for everybody else. So currently for S3 work, uh, I think there is some generic libraries out there which can do generic data access and then go with uh, implementation behind it. Uh, to be honest, the few that we researched uh, didn't have a uh, deeper integration into the newer features. And they can't keep up with all the newer features coming on with every storage engine out there. So for this, sure. uh, it's not really a big wrapper. Uh, I think the decisions are still being made and not finalized. But currently, we're choosing to have native integrations. Native works best. 
So we do native integrations to every store. It's extra code, uh, but that abstractions uh, don't serve a purpose. They actually hamper performance in the long run. Um, makes sense. So ba basically what you're saying is you're building all of these connectors by ourselves, which, which makes sense in the longer term. But uh, is there a plan to maybe ship it out as a library or a dedicated plugin or something where other pieces of open search can use them? Because those are usual building blocks. Um, maybe we're using it for SQL queries today. There could be something else where other folks would want to use. So to be honest, you can think about it that way. But which is using standard S3 libraries. There's nothing as a wrapper or anything over there. So we, we don't have like an abstraction tier or a library. It's just S3. If you go to OCI, it's OCI. GCP, Google Object Storage. It's just their libraries as is. And okay. we're trying and avoiding purposefully not to build abstractions. Because with those abstractions, uh, you can't really get the maximum performance out of each and every engine. And even though all the engines look similar, there are nuances. There are some ways where S3 does perform better, and we want to optimize each use case for each engine. Okay. We have avoided Thanks. abstractions for Prometheus also. Uh, we have okay. looked at Calcite and a few other pieces uh, before. Abstractions come in the way of performance. But there's an issue on this, uh, and all the code is here. So if you feel looking at the code, you have a different use case, please, let's go for it. Yeah, uh, I'll take a look. Thank you. I'll connect with you offline also, sir. I know you. Sure. Sure. All right. And then Ryan asked a question. And this one, I think, goes out to everyone in this group in the yeah. meeting. Um, does Has anyone worked with uh, Trino or PrestoDB uh, in regards to querying open source as a data store? So um, we have connectors that are working over SQL and we have connectors that are working over DSL. Uh, connector ecosystems choose whether they want to work over DSL or SQL. Uh, I think uh, Reno, we had few connectors that were going over the SQL tier and using JDBC to connect into. Uh, I think recently we might see a Dremio connector also come in. Uh, we have Tableau, Power BI, uh, all the JDBC, ODBC folks over here. And DB API was contributed by the guys from Apache Superset and they continue to maintain it. So I think this connection the ecosystem gets them with a very standard compliant output format and query format in. And they all use SQL. But there are a few connectors directly on DSL. Uh, and those are also there. So just choose what connector you want and where you want to go for. Ryan, does that answer your question? Sorry, I had to find that mute button. Um, I think so, maybe. So I haven't seen the connector for like Trino to open search specifically. Um, I'll have to poke around more for that probably. Um, the uh again Do you have I was, a use case for Trino or particular things on this we can catch up offline. Too. Um yeah, we can yeah, maybe talk about that offline. But you know, in particular, as you highlighted earlier, even right, lack of joins and stuff like that. There's some data sets yeah, might be using Trino to get around some search ideas. So if they have a lack of joins, it's not going to magically work because they use a connector from Trino. Uh, if they have a lack of joins, I would say just use SQL and we support joins via SQL. There are inherent limitations because of the nature of the engine, but joins do work across two indices. We are collecting feedback on an issue uh, with multi-index joins. Uh, we can enable multi-index joins, we just don't because it might be misused. But I would say if you have a use case for joins, uh, we're also thinking about lookup and materialized joins as part of the few of the projects that we're running. But I think to open an issue, if anything you need over here, please. Cool, thanks. I know those questions, Ani. Yeah, seriously. I'm not seeing anything new coming through on the chat. So I think uh, that gives us some open office time if, uh, if anyone likes. Thanks everyone. If, if Ryan thinks of another question. 
Aha, or anyone. I, or as, I said, as I said, I'm going to try to make that my last one. Like, like it's all good. No, it's your so feedback's always great. You know yeah. that, man. Like even the questions are a very good form of feedback that raises thoughts. Hmm. Uh, David, did you say, I, I thought I heard you mention not too long ago that we're seeing a lot of issues being tagged with good first issue in our, yeah. in our GitHub. Yeah. Uh, that I wanted to point that out to everyone with Hacktoberfest coming up. Uh, I'm not sure who's responsible for doing all that tagging because it was someone much more uh, driven than I. But uh, that's uh, that kind of stuff helps because that that kind of gives uh, potential new contributors something to aim at. Yeah. So those seriously. are those are starting to show up. If anyone uh, you know just for the sake of Hacktoberfest wants to uh, check any of that out, they're starting to pile up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, I was thinking to myself, I probably need to go and like tackle a couple of issues. It's been a little bit since I've written Java, so need to freshen up. Yeah, Java six was what I learned back uh back in college that's quite some time <laughs> i won't share my age i remember doing java 4 and java 5 and for some weird reason i did the certification exam on java 4 it was like ages ago wow one two about genetic data and in particular genome matching and he wanted to test it with open search and i was like this looks like a lot of fun so i've admittedly been like back uh backroom planning um a cluster to ingest 256 gigs of uh genetic data which i have no clue what to do with but <laughs> it's um hopefully something he'll work with me on <laughs> But apparently there's a whole system out there already that does this, but um, people are poking around and seeing if there is some, um, yeah, some other interesting uses. Ryan has uh, not let us down. Did Ani say something about using PPL with Kafka? Ah, so yes, I think Ani just dropped, but yeah. um, what he had mentioned was uh, you can use PPL, the command line utility, which is still in development, um, to output to anywhere. So, you know, the question I kind of posed to him was like, hey, what would someone use that for? You know, I could see maybe you run a quick report and you scrape off some files or scrape off some, um, what is that called? Data points and stuff into a file, but you know, what other things? And he mentioned that the command line could actually be run as a full featured server for um, scraping data in flight and then outputting to Kafka where you could do, you know, all of your other Kafka things. So that would be phenomenal. Interesting. You know, I, I always suspect that the old school Linux admin nerds would uh, love that kind of stuff, you know, because when there's a CLI solution, everything just becomes a tool to integrate. Yeah. I like that stuff. Yeah, I I think that um, you said you think that, will, no, I'm not. I'm not sure that it's going to be only through data prepper. It, uh, I think it's going to be its own standalone, which um, will help make it a little bit more lightweight. Um, not that Data Prepper isn't lightweight. Data Prepper is phenomenal at what it does. Um, speaking of things I need to get my hands on, this, this is so hard because there's so many people doing so many things with open search. It's like you've got observability search, um, people doing research and data science type things with it. Um, but anyhow. Kafka. Everyone needs Kafka support. I think the Kafka connector uh, already supports ingesting from open search, though, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Ivan has that connector out. Let me double check. That's actually a subject on which I would uh, like to learn a little bit more. Kafka is not something I've had the pleasure of uh, playing with as a new toy. Yeah, it's it is phenomenally powerful message queue, and the thing that makes it so great is it is a read multiple times and scalable read, uh, basically message queue. Let's see, drop this in the chat. Documentation, here we go. Sync connector for Apache Kafka. Ah, Andrew beat me to it. 
Sorry, David. I know it's okay. <laughs> you're you're just quicker on the keyboard than I am, and I know that. I already knew it. Nate's really quick on the keyboard too. He's like types at 250 words a minute or something crazy oh, like that. Know, Nate, what is it? I don't it? know about that fast. But, it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I, can, I can burst well over 150. <laughs> yeah, what ah, crazy person sitting here like 50 words a minute. I, I grew up on BBSs where uh, you had to you had to type to each other instead of all this fancy Zoom. Mm -hmm. Also, Nate, I'm going to smack you on the wrist because my last name has two T's. I thought you knew me better, man. Uh oh, dang! My <laughs> it's humble okay. And abject apologies, David. Nope, nope. I had to call you out publicly, so uh, there you've. Been well, plenty embarrassed. Yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> no, it's funny. Actually, that's that's happened a lot recently. And I don't know if there was like someone who started it, but there's this wave of people misspelling my last name now. So <laughs> I'm just smacking people as I find them. <laughs> yeah, please do. Yeah, I'm happy yeah. to be corrected and happy to accommodate. Mm -mm. So why don't I change that slide? Yep. There hey, do you guys know what you get? uh when you divide the circumference of a pumpkin by its diameter you get pumpkin pie yes wow you really squashed that one <laughs>